All right, so here we are at, a, at another booth. Uh, again, we're here with Aaron at Shunk uh, at Automate 2024. This is a, a pretty cool uh, station here, and it really showcases a lot of different types of processes and, and how tool changing uh, can, can be very valuable and, and really give uh, you the ability to really capture an ROI out of a robotic system. Give us the rundown of what's going on here in the system. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Malachi. So the robot that we see behind us, you know, if you're a traditional manufacturer, you might already have robotics in your facility that would be yep. doing machine loading and unloading. Yep. So we could do something outside of the machine that we would call secondary tasks yep. that would reduce your ROI on that robot. Um, but, or you also may have processes where you want to pull out deburring and have a robot dedicated to that task. So a couple of different use cases for this, yep. but what we're seeing behind us is, um, coincidentally with the timing, is there's kind of two main processes shown. Um, here we see part to process where if you have some complex features that need to be deburred, you can use the robot with a gripper and present the tool to the, uh, in this case, it's a um, deburring spindle with yeah. compensation built in. And that allows you to have a little bit more control over the moves versus here we're gonna drop off the gripper, change over to um, a material removal tool and take the tool to the part. So you, with tool changing um, components, tool changing storage systems, you're able to easy and, easily and quickly change over and do different tasks that humans are definitely capable of doing, but we see that you can increase machine throughput quality and also um, avoid injuries through unergonomic tasks by having robots do those kind of dark, dirty, dangerous tasks like deburring, grinding, polishing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also too, like this really showcases like the different ways of going about uh, designing a system. Like when there's two completely different methods whenever you're doing a, a part to tool where you're picking up the part, you're taking it over to the tool, and then you're performing, in this case, a deburr application. Uh, whereas right now, now you see tool to part where you're taking this deburr tool to the part and, and, and doing the uh, deburring. And, and so like some of the factors that may matter is maybe the payload of the robot. Maybe you want to use a smaller robot, and if you want to use a smaller robot, then maybe you have to do tool to part since the, the tool is the lighter object. Whereas like if you want to do the part to tool, especially on something like an engine block like this, you might have to increase the payload of your robot to be able to do a, a tool to part. So you can, this kind of gives you the flexibility to uh, engineer the application in a way that, uh, you know, whatever makes the most sense for what it, whatever it is that you're doing. If you already got to do material handling of this and, and, and maybe you're picking up from end of line and taking it to the next process anyway, then, then maybe just doing a larger robot and, and t doing a uh, part to tool is the better option. Or if it's just running down a conveyor line and it has multiple stations, then maybe it makes more sense that you just do tool to part. Yep, you hit a really important point there, which is if you have to do some other task after the processing, then you can go ahead and grip, do your process, and then don't have to go back and tool change. You can save that, that processing time. So that's a really good point. The other important thing to mention is most of our tools have radial or axial compensation, which allows you to um, account for variances in things like cast parts where the tolerances might be a little bit larger. So yeah. that's a really important piece to note is the compensation allows for some uh, high quality, consistent components. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys didn't notice, all these, uh, all these different tools are different chunk tools, right? So that's right. Uh, can you kind of explain? Are these these new, these ones here are pneumatic ones, right? That's right. So we do have electric, but what you see here is all pneumatically driven um, okay. spindles, effectively. Um, so yeah, this is a a variety of what we call Remendo. It's a material removal tool that's okay. that's handled by a robot, um, and it's just a, an air spindle with that compensation that can be adjusted, which is a really nice feature. So if you if you want to take a heavier pass, then you can firm up your air pressure and it will take a heavier cut. Gotcha. Or if you have a, a, a highly variable surface that you just want to take a lighter cut to, yeah. you can decrease that pressure and it will allow it to mm -hmm. flex a little bit more. Nice. Um, and Malachi, it's nice to pair this with, you see the um, kind of silver piece below that. That's called a tool changer storage stand. Yep. So you'll see the orange light there. Where really important to us is providing data confirmation back yep. to the system. So that has locking features where you can confirm that the tool has been placed and that it's locked in, confirm that, and then move on with your next process step. Yep. Yeah, that definitely helps with like a lot, a lot of like safety type of concerns because that way whenever the robot lets go and the, the tool takes over, 
that before the robot takes off and the part just falls off on the floor, you can get that confirmation. Yep, absolutely. Looking at these two these two different uh, tools that you have here, the form factor is a little bit different. What it, what's the difference yep. between the two tools? So the one in the back is uh, capable of higher RPMs. So okay. the different processes would require different speeds. Um, so. I think this is called a PCFC, forgive me for maybe not knowing the exact acronym. Um, but yeah, so that would be used for things where you need to, to tool up high RPMs and you want to gotcha. maintain high pressure. Um, sometimes those tools might take a little bit higher air volume because you need to have maintain the speed. Yeah. Uh, but then for other lighter cuts or with different cutting tools, you would take operate at a lower pressure or a lower PSI. Um, so that's typically the reason for the, the varied form factor. The nice thing about the electric tools, which we call RCE, it's uh, just, another, again, another acronym, is with these are, are not, um, you can control the, the compensation pressure, but you yep. can't control the speed. It's either on or off. With the electric versions, you use a, a controller and a, a transformer where you can actually do variable speeds and get a little bit more process control out of that. So um, yeah, here we just wanted to show the, the basic um, pneumatic cell. Yeah. But yeah, it's a nice option to have that, that additional control. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And another thing too is like, this is a very fundamental thing about tool changing, but if you have something that has like a long cycle time, that can really help with getting the ROI out of a system because if you, you know it's already a two minute, three minute, four, five minute cycle time for, for other processes in, in the line. Something like this gives you the ability to process many different types of uh, processes on, on this item right here. So as you can see, we're doing deburring, you're doing polishing. This gives you the ability to purchase one robot, have, have the four different tools that are here in this, in this cell and, and the cost for these tools are gonna to be much less than the procurement of another robot. And on top of that, you still need to buy the tool anyway. So it's only the additional cost of the tool changer to be able to uh, just kind of help maximize the ROI of a system like this. Absolutely, yeah. Again, it's, it's a trend we talked about earlier. Flexibility and automation is really important to a lot of, of users, whether yep. it's new or experienced. So tool changing allows you to change out that end-of-arm tool for a many different tasks. Absolutely. And, and then one other thing that we didn't really uh, touch on, but it's another fundamental reason for using uh, tool changers is for part variants. So maybe we're running this model part right now, but we need to run a, a, another model, you know, right after this, and we want to automatically change to that other model of part. And we could also do, you know, verification of of the the proper tool in in the robot's gripper uh, to make sure that we're using the right deburr on the right uh, part number. And so this gives us the ability to, to be able to handle multiple different part variants and be able to just change automatively. And Mark, that's really interesting. We use this in our own facility. Um, so we manufacture tool holders out of North Carolina. Yeah. And we, we tool change, but um, we do we run mod sizes of around 80 parts um, each, each uh, run. And then we might change from say a four inch slug to an eight inch slug. And we still do automatic tool changing because even though it's only maybe three or four changes per day, depending on the cycle time, yeah. that's time that the operator doesn't have to mechanically modify the end of their yep. You know where the position is, you know your tool offsets. And so even if you're not doing tool changes every 30 seconds, like we see here, it's still a really valuable technology in many industrial manufacturing environments. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, thank you for uh, showing the system to us and showing us your products. Absolutely. Not Hopefully, thank you. yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.